Every day I see more and more new and creative methods touted as effective ways to raise money, whether it be in social media, events, or even marketing products. But today I'm going to share with you the best way to raise money for your nonprofit and involves going back to basics. Let's get right to it. In the mid 1990s, I was asked to come alongside one of our local teams who was nearly 25,000 in debt on a $100,000 budget. That might not seem like a lot, but considering that it was more than 30 years ago, those amounts would probably be equivalent to 10 times that in today's dollars. It was approaching year end and the executive director and I decided to target one city with the largest concentration of major donors to the organization and never stop meeting with people until we'd completely eliminated the debt and build a sound reserve. We made some appointments in advance, but a great majority of the appointments were made while traveling to and from meetings, staying just one step ahead of the next appointment. During that trip, we met with the owner of an independent oil company. I remember vividly entering his office and seeing a handful of toy helicopters, planes, and race cars on his desk. I found that fascinating and asked if he was a model toy builder. His response caught me off guard. Young man, those are replicas of my real toys. I felt embarrassed, but clearly this man was in a whole nother league than me. He wrote us a check for $25,000 on the spot, just as if I was tipping my mail carrier $20 at Christmas. We also visited a longtime friend of the organization who had fallen off the radar and going to see him seemed to warm his heart. It definitely did ours. We laughed and reminisced for hours. Just a few months later, he passed away and I was so thankful we got the time together. We visited more than a dozen current and prospective partners or donors and made many new friends during the three-day trip. In all, we raised nearly $100,000, got the organization out of debt, and built a firm foundation that lasted the next 25 years. That trip was evidence of just how important meeting face-to-face -face is and the success that can be achieved with hard work and loving care. No matter what new or innovative idea or strategy you've heard lately, there's no better way to raise money than to go face to face with an individual or couple. The success rate on an in-person meeting is 50% or better in getting a gift and that, that time allows you to develop a friendship that may not have existed in the past. So why don't nonprofit leaders just abandon every strategy and just do this strategy alone? In a word, fear. Fear of getting an appointment, fear of what to say on an appointment, and most of all, fear of asking for money. So let's address each of those fears head on so that you can take advantage of the best way to raise money. Step number one, getting the appointment. Oftentimes it can be one of the most important but also the most difficult portion of the face-to-face -face strategy process. At this point, you must determine who you wish to meet with, an existing partner, a prospect using a referral or with a suspect, essentially a cold call. With existing partners or donors, this might be easiest of the three options as you probably know the individual already and there could be some relationship, even if it's just a budding relationship. You might know the donor such that you can schedule an appointment with them directly or at least know the, the person who keeps their schedule. Often that person is referred to unofficially as the gatekeeper. The job of the gatekeeper is to screen those individuals wanting some time with their already busy boss or supervisor. The person lets in who he or she wants and it may or may not be determined by who the boss wants to see. It's critical to get on the good side of the gatekeeper because that person may have a strong influence on the boss you want to see. With a prospect, getting an appointment may be much more difficult because the prospective donor may or may not know you. That's why a referral from a mutual acquaintance is so important. At least you might get 50% of the appointments with a referral. Without one, you might at best get 25%. And of course, with or without a referral, you may still need to get past the gatekeeper. With suspects, you need to call someone out of the blue and your success rate of getting an appointment drops significantly to 10% or less. 
To alleviate the fear of getting an appointment, it's my recommendation that you start with an existing partner where the success rate of getting the appointment is higher to build your confidence essentially. Step number two, what to do on the appointment. Every great appointment begins with a strong opening. This includes any introduction that might be needed. Give an appropriate greeting and ask how they're doing. Mention the name of the referral if you used one. It's always good to remind the person as they may have forgotten who referred to you or never knew it if you had to go through an appointment with the gatekeeper. Be sure to address or remind them the reason you're there. John Smith suggested that I reach out to you, a successful business leader, because our organization has created some new and innovative ways to make a difference in the lives of disadvantaged people in our community. And John thought you might be interested. I'm excited to share those programs or projects with you today and the potential outcomes from us partnering together. By using probing or open-ended questions, find out their interests and concerns in the community or in the world or regarding your area of focus or mission. Validate their areas of interest. Never push back at this point, even if they're mistaken in their beliefs or opinions or even their perceived facts. You don't ever want to invalidate their feelings or perceptions. You can wait to address mistakes and perceptions when you've had an opportunity to explain your projects and programs. Once you've laid the foundation for your time, which includes their interests and passions, begin the main body of the presentation. Share your story, how you got involved in the organization, especially if there was something more than just you needed a job. I've shared before about a colleague who, before coming to work for me, got her start in the nonprofit world in the American Cancer Society when her mother got cancer. Unfortunately, she eventually lost her battle with the disease, but the daughter's work continued on. Then share information about your organization. Relate what your organization is doing about the areas of interest the donor or partner shared with you initially. Be sure to check for understanding at various points along the way. Is this making sense, Mr. Jones? Step number three, request for funds. It's best to start by stating a reason for the partner or donor to give. This means explaining the problem your organization was created to tackle or solve. It's critical not to gloss over or skip this step because as I've said many times before, your donor may not even know the problem exists. As an example, I've often used my story of living in affluent Fairfax County, Virginia, which is a suburb of Washington, D.C., and the fact that I didn't even know we had a large homeless population until the leader of a food pantry showed me the statistics. Then outline the specific plans, strategies, programs, or projects that you utilize to combat the problem and especially incorporate examples of changed lives, telling at least one person's actual story, and above all, share outcomes. Although your past successes give you credibility, it's your future plans that inflame the hearts of men and women and lead to life-changing gifts. You want to make sure that your programs or projects has, have goals with measurable outcomes so that you can report back on the positive impacts that were made as a result of their gift. Lack of measurable outcomes is one of the surest ways to not get a second gift from a partner or donor. Ask for a gift based on the individual's giving history, if they're a current partner, or estimated capacity based on your research for prospects. Ask for the program or project you described when explaining your strategies for solving the problem your organization was created to solve. Keep your request clear and simple. Complicated will limit their ability to embrace this opportunity quickly. And it should be presented as an opportunity and not a need. Every organization has needs, but few have exciting opportunities. I'm sure your organization is one of those that has great opportunities. Present this as a way for them to be a part of something that will be life-altering for individuals and quite possibly will change the world. Then wait for their response. Once you've made your case, let them decide. Don't make the mistake and over-communicate and talk yourself out of asking or out of a gift. Waiting for the answer allows them to process how they will give, not necessarily if they will give. Be prepared for all possible responses. Yes, maybe, and of course, no. I've got a video that explains how to handle all responses. Watch it right after finishing this video. Step number four, after the appointment. Regardless of the response, thank them for their time and be sure to send a note of thanks when you return to your office. 
If they gave you a maybe answer, be sure to call them back when you said you would. Utilizing the best way to raise money includes overcoming your fears. The face-to-face -face strategy outlined in this video has been successful for me and countless others, and I believe it will be for you. Hit the like button and add a comment below letting me and the community know your thoughts on these. If you feel I missed any step or fear, please share that with me in the comment section so that we can help our entire community of life changers get better. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends or colleagues. There's no cost to you. It's my desire that by subscribing, you'll learn principles and practices that help you secure the resources necessary to accomplish your mission and change the world. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.